As archaic as checks may be, they still are transacted daily by millions of businesses and individuals who depend on the United States Postal Service to securely send and receive their checks, as well as other financial and personal information. But in case you haven't heard, check fraud related to mail theft has exploded over the past couple of years. And as it's looking right now, it doesn't seem as if much is being done to stop it. So as a result, fraudsters have been raking in millions of dollars while individuals and businesses have to deal with the headaches of trying to get their money back while securing their bank accounts and personal information. So in this special edition of Infamous Fraud News, we'll be taking a deep dive into the topic of check fraud related to mail theft with two respected professionals in the fraud industry. Frank McKenna, who I would consider an OG in the fraud game because he has over 30 years experience in fraud fighting, so best believe he's seen a couple things. Frank is the co-founder of the AI firm Point Predictive and the owner of the website frankonfraud.com where he covers all the latest fraud news, updates, and trends, so make sure you go check that out. And we have James Watts, a senior project manager for mobile fraud at Mike Tech Systems and a national check professional for over seven years. James has extensive knowledge and experience in check fraud and all the technology behind defending against it. So hit that like button, leave a comment with your thoughts, and also subscribe to the channel to add some quality, practical, informative, and entertaining content to your YouTube timeline and stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. All right? Let's get right into the information. Mail theft, washing checks, and check fraud have been around for ages. Many fraudsters get into check fraud because the method is relatively easy, doesn't require much, and could lead to cashing out thousands of dollars in a matter of days. But as of the past two to three years, it seems almost impossible to go a day without reading or seeing another news story about check fraud related to mail theft. Started about 18 months ago. Um, about 18 months ago, I started to hear rumors of check fraud increasing. Because we're even seeing mail carriers robbed and beaten for their keys and their mail. Surveillance video shows this dark car pull up on Long Shadow Drive in East Harris County. Another surveillance camera captures him walking up on a beloved mail carrier. All of a sudden, the man charging quickly pulls a gun and neighbors say he demanded the master key. I'm, I'm so shook, I can't even no, think right okay. now. You're all right. A postman fraught with fear just minutes after finding himself staring down the barrel of a gun and demanded everything the postman had his iPhone, and his Postal Service keys. Are you injured? No, I'm not injured. I'm a little shook. I had a gun shoved in my face and my keys taken from me. A Bronx postal worker is pistol whipped and robbed in a brazen attack. The gunman getting away with more than $100,000. This white minivan parked out in front. The driver crawls into the back and waits. Just after 7 in the morning, this postal worker and her husband open the gate. Police say the suspect dressed in all black then follows her in. Moments later, cops say she screams for help. Her husband runs across the street only to be held up at gunpoint. Going to a workplace every morning has to be a safe thing. These mail carriers are going to have to walk around with a firearm sooner or later with the way things have been going. And no pun intended, but the key to all these robberies is all behind stealing the mail carrier's access keys. They're the keys that will open every mailbox in a zip code or even a whole building you can access thousands of people's mail just with that same key and it almost seems like the usps itself is inviting fraudsters to keep on stealing the mail they started to change the the regulations about what the postal police could do so you had they really kind of confined them to just the post office uh, locations they eliminated a lot of positions so they defunded or they cut back on the funding so there was less of them they couldn't do as much right so they were really kind of really limited and they couldn't really go out on the streets and protect the postal workers to shed more light on what frank touched on there was a recent field hearing that was held on september 7 2022 led by gerald Connolly, the chairman of the subcommittee on government operations in philadelphia where he attempted to uncover what's behind the recent increases in mail theft and crime. Mail theft and mail-related crime have skyrocketed in Pennsylvania and across the nation. Between 2018 and 2021, robberies of mail carriers more than tripled and robberies involving a gun more than quadrupled. 
The Postal Inspection Service is opening cases in only a fraction of these crimes, offering little in the way of crime prevention. During that meeting, we would hear from Frank Albergo, the national president of the Postal Police Officers Association, who stated what the issue was pretty clearly. In 2020, the Postal Service stripped postal police officers of their law enforcement authority and began gutting the postal police force. Once 2,700 officers strong, postal police ranks have been decimated to approximately 350 rank and file officers. Indeed, the Postal Service is actively defunding its uniformed police force. Here are the facts. After 50 years, the inspection service revoked the policing power of postal police officers while they are away from postal real property. After 50 years, all proactive postal police mail theft prevention and letter carrier protection patrols have been eliminated. After 50 years, the inspection service has prohibited PPOs from responding to any and all postal related crimes occurring away from postal real estate. Given our attrition rate, in all likelihood, there will be fewer than 300 rank and file PPOs at the, by the year 2024 unless changes are made. Many of the crimes targeting our nation's letter carriers and the U.S mail could be prevented by simply having PPOs patrol specific areas with high rates of postal crime. Albergo was extremely vocal about his stance on these changes made by the controversial postmaster Louis DeJoy and it left me wondering, what good reason would there be to make such a change? I mean, I'm sure the people at the top in the USPS should have seen something like this coming. I think if you look at the big picture, I think they were just trying to cut back on expenses. Um, but I can't think of any good reason why you would do that. So from what it seems, the USPS clearly has no plan on how to handle this increase in fraud. And if anything, it only seems as if it's going to get worse. It's it's um, definitely ramping up and I don't know when it's going to stop, honestly. With this surge in mail theft, Telegram has become Amazon for check fraud. And it seems to be taking the dark web's place when it comes to underground online fraud networks. It's basically like eBay for scammers or check fraud where they have reviews. Telegram is definitely taking over the dark web, in particular for more newbie types, far easier to log in and instantly kind of, you know, toggle between channel after channel after channel and find exactly what you're looking for. USPS access keys can generate a ton of cash for fraudsters on Telegram since it allows them to sell the work that they steal and they could run their own check fraud schemes as well. They've seen a huge increase in most, if not all metro areas. Um, so those keys go for more. Uh, so like a, a box in New York City is going to be more than, say, a box in Tampa, Florida. Um, so it's really the volume um, and then also the reputation of the seller. Um, so someone who's done a lot of business and you know, it has been known for good product can command more than somebody that doesn't have that standing. There's even Jack boys on Telegram who have no interest in doing fraud. They specialize specifically in stealing and selling USPS keys since they can easily be resold for thousands of dollars. With so many checks being stolen, resold and washed for fraud on Telegram, it has simplified the process for fraudsters since it allows them to have a wide variety of checks to choose from. And it also creates a network that fraudsters can use to share methods and other ways to execute on fraud. The fraudsters do a great job of collaborating and sharing information. So they'll, they know what banks to hit, where to go, and they're all organized about it. Also compared to counterfeit checks, stolen checks offer many advantages to fraudsters. First, they're able to get their hands on a legit check that has the owner's routing, account number, and real signature on it. The serial numbers on these stolen checks are usually in sequence with the account history. And if enough checks are stolen from the same individual within a specific time frame, it could give the fraudster an overall idea of how much money they may have in their accounts. But don't get it twisted. Fraudsters are doing more than just stealing checks. When they break open these boxes or steal the mail, they're not just stealing checks. Checks is a, a hot commodity, but they're stealing everything that has your PII on it. So, you know, this would be statements from credit card banks, uh, insurance forms where they actually, will, I've gotten them myself, you know, get a insurance bill or something, they'll put your social security number on it. They steal information off of your phone, right? If you get your cell phone bill sent to your house, they'll 
get your phone number. And then if they can piece together your social security number, they can call the tele, the, you know, the at t or Verizon and try to SIM swap and take over your phone. With all this information in their hands, fraudsters are also putting it to use in the form of creating synthetic accounts that are then used to drop fake checks or can be sold to other fraudsters looking for an account to load up and cash out on. It's the, an account, whether it's a real person or not, but it's set up with the express intent to commit fraud on. And some of these guys will let them age three, six months and maybe even have a little bit of transaction going in there that's completely legit. So it looks like a legitimate account. Um, and then it just, boom, gets hit. And finally, Telegram has created many opportunities for scammers to scam newbie scammers eager to make it into federal prison. I think half the people on Telegram are just scamming the other half of the people. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, illicit activity, but a lot of the, a lot of the, especially the newbies are getting scammed themselves. They're becoming victims of fraud because they're operating in a real bad element. Scammers scamming scammers. Who would have thunk it? Outside of the postal service, banks are also facing many challenges with this surge in mail theft and check fraud. And as it seems, their technology isn't always the best when it comes to defending against check fraud. Uh, what we're seeing is the direct result of banks spending their money on protecting all the new shiny things. So credit cards, debit cards, account opening. They've put all that focus into that, but they've let, they haven't you know, touched checks in 10 years. It also seems like banks are almost okay with check fraud as long as it remains within the budget. The other problem that you work with too with banks is every year they budget a certain amount of dollars for acceptable loss, right? So they're, the status quo, If as long as their loss numbers are within or close to what they're budgeting, um, it's already accounted for. So it's like if you can't beat them, just put money to the side for them to steal, I guess. But with that, some banks are investing the necessary technology needed to defend against check fraud, such as Mike Tech System service called Check Defender that relies on artificial intelligence. Yeah, that's actually where we come in. So that is what we're building or we have built right now is um, Check Fraud Defender. And what that is, is basically a consortium, so networks of banks that process their checks and what we do is we use obviously AI and neural networks and, and technology to look at a check and then based on like you know based on checks that you've written in the past that ghost has written in the past that we know we're good how does that look does that look different and if it looks different we alert the the bank sending it in hey you want to take a look at this because it doesn't look like it's supposed to look like but until all banks get on the same page with sharing information and decide to upgrade their old school fraud defense systems and techniques, it's still open season for these fraudsters. So with that being said, this surge in mail theft and check fraud seems to be related to three key factors. First, USPS decided to cut back on postal police and are limiting the few that actually remain from stepping off a of postal property, protecting mailboxes and mail carriers while they go on their routes. Second, Telegram has created a marketplace for check fraud that has opened the door for fraudsters of all levels to get in on the money train. And finally, banks seem to be waiting for checks to just go away and don't seem interested in upgrading their systems, since many times it's more cost effective to just let the fraudsters get away with doing the fraud. So there you have it, folks. That's our special edition of Infamous Fraud News on USPS mail theft and check fraud. Make sure you check out frankonfraud.com for all the latest fraud info, news, and trends. And if you're a fraud fighter or a banking professional, tell your bank to get at my guy James Watts and Mike Tech Systems so you can step your bank's check fraud defense game up. Real talk. Also, as always, I hope you found value or you were entertained by the video. If you were, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel to catch more of my content on financial fraud and stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. I peace.